Hey, it's Joel, the 3D printing nerd, and today we're going to talk about the Lattice Torture Cube that Maker's Muse made. It's pretty cool. Angus made this, I think, on a live stream, and then I was able to download it. And I printed out a few, and I'd like to talk about them, and I'd like to show them to you. So let's do this. Are you ready? Go. Ah, uh, there you are. Welcome back. There were three videos I was going to work on tonight, and I left it up to you, my Twitter audience, to vote. After uh, more than a few more than 100 votes came in, it was decided that this was the video to focus on tonight. And don't worry, I'll get that Wombot XL unboxing video done. And Heather, I'm sorry, your 3D pink mafia stuff is going to have to wait for another day. Now we're going to talk about these lattice torture cubes that Maker's Muse made. He used Fusion 360 and made these, this cube, and then he made this crazier cube, and the idea was to download it and test it out on your printer and see how well it did. And I've seen some pictures of people that have printed it, they posted them. Uh, so various printers have made them in various ways. Some have been horrific failures. Some have been just mind-blowingly awesome. I'm here to show you some of the tiniest little ones and some of the largest ones that you may have seen. So let's, uh, let's get to it. My first go at printing one of these cubes was this guy. And this, this green, awesome-looking cube was made with the Matter Hackers Pro PLA on the Ultimaker 2 Plus. I think it did an okay job. There was some retraction issues, as you can tell. And unfortunately, I did have a layer skip. And you can tell. It's like the whole print shifted over. I wasn't there watching it, so unfortunately, I didn't see it happen. But at the same time, I remember Preston over at Press Reset said, Yeah, print it with no infill. You should be fine. But this base, this base requires some infill. Needless to say, though, it did complete. And if you look at the top, the top actually looks glorious. So this is kind of a neat thing. It gave me an idea of what... To, I've only tried it once on the Ultimaker. Of course, I could try it again. But this kind of gave me an idea of what to expect. Next, I wanted to exercise my Lulzbot Mini, and I loaded up some of that ColorFab Engen Flex material, and I came up with this cube. This cube was experiencing a little bit of failure right here, and it's stringing a bit, but that's because I'm using a flexible material, right? I can, I can just squish it. I can just squish it all up. The Engine Flex is phenomenal material, and I'm going to talk more about that in another video, but for now, uh, I did want to show off this cube that it did make. The stringiness, I think I can get rid of with a little bit more retraction, or maybe printing at a slightly lower temperature. I did have some bed adhesion issues, so I used a 25 perimeter brim, and then I taped it down to the PEI print surface. Yeah, I'm crazy. Overall, this cube, it turned out okay. Obviously, it's not a perfect print, but it really gives me an idea of what to do next if I want to try printing this cube on the Lulzbot Mini with the ColorFab and Gen Flexible material. Yeah, kind of neat. Next was the Prusa i3 Mark II, and next was the time I really experienced a failure. If you look at this, I did have the layer shifting like the Ultimaker, but I had a lot of stringing because this, this centerpiece right here, uh, it, it, <laughs> it broke free of the center and it wasn't able to continue. These strings are down because the, the piece wasn't here for it to adhere to. The top part here and the parts where, uh, where the model shows great layering and very little stringing, uh, it's kind of nice, but at the same time, uh, I would have liked to have seen a complete print on the Prusa i3 Mark II obviously. I may try to run this print again on that machine and I may try to adjust some settings or I might just watch it because you know a print never fails while you're watching it, right? Well, you guys know uh, I like to GMAX size things, right? So of course I'm going to try to print this big and holy cow! Look at this! Whoa! This is the size of my head. No, this is bigger. This is bigger than my head. And the GMAX printer did a phenomenal job. Look at this thing. I used the Matter Hackers Pro PLA 1.75 millimeter on the GMAX, and the GMAX has a 0.5 millimeter J head. I increased the size of this cube to 250%, and I did, I believe it was 20% infill. The base itself took eight hours to print because I was printing a little bit slower. There are some issues with this model, just a little bit. I can see that there's tiny, tiny little bits of stringing in places. I can see that uh, 
there's a little bit of layer inconsistencies on the z-axis. Uh, other than that though, I would consider this to be a really cool model. It is interesting when you're printing something this size, you're, you're not testing the printer for the same things you're printing when you're printing it a little bit smaller because these full size columns here aren't going to curl upwards as much as a, a smaller bit of filament. So I didn't run this so much as a test of the printer, but more so as the generation of an art piece. And what's great is I can take this to different educational facilities and classrooms when I talk about 3D printing and show them, look at this, this is cool. No, there was no support. No, there's no way this could be made with another manufacturing method. Additive manufacturing made this and it's freaking cool. Oh, it's so huge. I love this thing. Look at this. Finally, you know I like the GMAX size things, but now with my Form 2, I like to micro size things. So I did. <laughs> I don't even know if you can see it. Look at this. This is a tiny, tiny little cube. I shrunk it way, way down. I did have to use supports on the form, but that's okay. Uh, it's, it's intact and it's... It's square. Uh, I cured this using the natural UV rays from the sun here in the Pacific Northwest. So it took all day. <laughs> it's so tiny. It's so ultra mega, super tiny. I don't even know if you can see this, but it's crazy tiny and it's awesome. Well, that sure was fun. I'm glad I got the chance to talk to you about the Lattice Cube from Angus. I'll put a link down below to where you can get it. And if you choose to print it yourself, I'd love to see how you fare. Tweet it to me. I'm at Joel Telling on Twitter. And of course, don't forget, tweet it to Maker's Muse as well. He's at Maker's Muse. I love that guy. All right, let's call it good right there. Thanks for watching. Like this video if you like big things. Like this video if you like small things. Don't forget to subscribe because I don't want you to miss out on any of the cool stuff that I've got planned for the future. Big thanks to my patrons who support me at patreon.com. Hey, if you're running ad block and you want to not see advertisements good for you, but a good way to support your creators if you're running ad block is to throw a few dollars their way via Patreon. It's not required by any means, but you know, it does help. Don't forget to hug each other more. I love you guys. As always, high five.